Hi guys, and welcome to another Underworld Short for all of our Patreon subscribers. I'm your host, Sean Williams, and since we did our episode on the Yalisco New Generation Cartel, or the CJNG, and its bloodthirsty but reclusive leader, Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho, this January, I've been really interested in the reports about the guy's health. Basically, Mencho is a complete recluse. He supposedly shifts from place to place in the outbacks of Michoacan, Yalisco, and neighboring states that have become killing fields for the battle over control of drug markets into the US. Namely, these days, synthetics and opioids, whose precursors roll in off Chinese boats at Pacific Coast ports around the area. Says Carl Morey, DEA special agent in LA to Univision a while back, quote, he hides in mountainous parts of Yalisco, Michoacan, and Colima. We believe he's not in the cities anymore. Now, usually, it's El Mencho dishing out promises of death, just like he did last August against a TV news anchor he accused of, quote, unfair coverage of his cartel. Yikes. But this year, Mencho's health itself has taken centre stage, and his cartel itself is getting squeezed by a bunch of forces in the region. And shout out to Inside Crime, who, great work as always, last week published a brilliant report about these events, which I'm going on a lot in this episode. And it all begins this January, when a series of criminal notices painted onto canvas, also known as Narcomantas, appear in the city of Colima, in the state of the same name, the borders Yalisco, which is home to Guadalajara, and for years, El Mencho, although, as we've just heard, he likes to move around a lot these days. Now, these narcomantas, they're penned by the Mezcales, AKL, the Cartel Independiente de Colima, which is headed up by a guy named Jose Bernabe Bruzuela, or La Vaca. Now, ordinarily, the Mezcales are enforcers for the CJNG, but these banners, the narcomantas, they claim that El Mencho is actually dead. And without him at the helm, La Vaca is gunning for top spot. Literally. In late January, gun battles break out all over Colima, which is a city of 750,000 people just a few minutes from Mexico's Pacific coast. Out there, the port city of Manzanillo has become a key transshipment point for chemical precursors much of the stuff from China that is used to make synthetic drugs such as fentanyl that are flooding the US and killing almost as many Americans as diabetes. Just let that sink in. It's crazy. If La Vaca, the leader of the Mezcales, pulls Manzanillo away from the CJNG, well, the CJNG can kiss a big chunk of its opioid riches goodbye. Mencho or no Mencho. Hence the bloodshed. Over 60 people are killed during these fights, and 2,000 National Guards and soldiers are deployed to Colima by Mexico City. But is El Mencho actually dead? Well, we're not entirely sure. Most sources confirm that the 55-year-old kingpin has a chronic illness, most likely kidney disease. And since 2020, the Mexican state has claimed to have discovered a Jalisco hospital specially built just for him. But no body has been found, and the Mexican government claims there is, quote, no reliable information that El Mencho has popped his clogs. That hasn't stopped a wave of condolences from sicarios and plaza bosses on social media and tons of speculation as to who will or can fill El Mencho's sizable and pretty bloodstained shoes, or I guess to carry on the metaphor, clogs. Says DEA International Operations Chief Mike Vigil to Insight Crime, quote, Many Mexican drug traffickers have faked their own deaths and have spread rumours to take the heat off them. When criminals have health issues and are on the run from both security forces and rival cartels, they can't get the medical attention that they usually would. Ismael Sambara Garcia, alias El Mayo, is a diabetic but refuses to come out of the mountains for treatment for fear of capture. Local media has reported El Mencho's death before, 
They've even said he also has diabetes. In 2020, Andres Manuel López Obrador, or AMLO, the Mexican president, he denied rumors that El Mencho had died. Ask about the alleged passing at a press conference that February, AMLO responded, quote, lies. All of this that's happening are lies or fake news. This was during a time of AMLO's doubling down on his so-called Hugs Not Bullets campaign to repudiate violence against the cartels. Which, by the way, every single expert I've spoken with about the current wars says is simply an abdication of responsibility and power. I even spoke to former White House advisor a couple of weeks ago who wants the CJNG, Sinaloa cartel and other Mexican groups designated as terror outfits so that the US can, quote, use kinetic force against known hideouts and drug labs. So, uh, yeah, how does that feel, Saddam? But such fakeouts are a double-edged sword, especially when you're fighting on some of the most dangerous turfs on Earth. In February, at a funeral in the village of San Jose de Gracia, near Aguas Calientes in Michoacán, which is the center of the current drug wars in Mexico, gunmen massacred 17 CJNG members. This bloodletting has led the Mexican media to christen a new cartel in the region, the Pajaros Sierras, which I think means like mountain birds in Spanish. Uh, Sorry for any uh, native speakers that are listening. Anyway, this new group's leader, street named Palillo, was soon himself killed in an episode of swift jungle justice that's come to define the wars of late. But combine this with the continued emergence of the Carteles Unidos, which, if you listen to our show on the CJNG, is an autodefensa group turned cartel itself, and CJNG is getting squeezed on its home field. Not only is the region home to Manzanillos, but it has another important port city, Lázaro Cárdenas, and there are a number of vital rail networks to be controlled by the cartels. And a lot of this is going to come in a later episode we're planning about China, Mexico and the growing war for synthetics. You might have heard us mention it in the last episode. But needless to say, when there are literal billions of dollars at stake and entry into America's fastest growing drug market, however gruesome and deadly the fentanyl crisis is, bodies are sure to drop south of the border. If you look at CJNG's territory in Michoacán, Jalisco and their neighboring states, it's patchy. And it's divided up between a bunch of different industries, not just the drugs, but there's avocados, logging, logistics, all kinds of agriculture. These groups are like viruses. They're just swallowing up whatever legal industry comes within their purview. Whether El Mencho is dead or not, will probably be consigned to speculation for a little while yet. What definitely is true, however, is that this February, Michoacan Attorney General's office reported that Miguel Angel Fernandez, somebody known as M2 in the CJNG organization, was the body found in the village of Cansaruí. I mean, such a high-ranking member of the cartel being killed, M2, I'm guessing, Mencho is M1, is not a good sign for its future. So watch this space. I'm sure we're going to have way more to follow this year on Mexico's most brutal cartel and many other forces that are shaking the ground there in Mexico, the Pacific, and even as far away as Shanghai and Beijing. (laughs) 